Well, hi, everyone. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, back when I was in the Army, there were three phrases that always struck fear into my heart. The first one was when the battalion sergeant major came up and said, Sir, I'd like to join you for your company run today. The second was when a second lieutenant said, Well, sergeant, in my experience. And the third one was when the captain said, Men, I've been thinking. Well, men, I've been thinking. Now, so far, we've gotten a very good handle on basic operations of the slide rule. I thought that we would take a step back for a moment and actually look at how a slide rule operates. It's going to be a little three-part series within a series. The first part today, we're going to talk about how the scales work with each other. In the second part, we're going to look at the genius of the design of the slide rule and accuracy. And the third is that we're going to look at the construction of the trigonometric scales to get a better understanding of how to use them. So let's get right into it. Well, let's have a look at the basic scales on the slide rule. We're all familiar, of course, with the C and the D scale. These are the base scales of the slide rule, and we know how they work. You have two logarithmic rulers next to each other. If you bring the index of 1 out to, say, 2, and then bring your cursor to 3, you multiply 2 by 3, and you get your answer of 6. Let's look up here at the A and B scale. Now, once again, if you bring your cursor to 2, put the index under it, and come out to 3, once again, you get your answer. 6. Now with the folded scales, we can pretty much do the same thing. Let's bring our cursor over here to 6, and we'll put our index under it, and then we can come out to, say, 2, and we get our answer right above it, 12. So they all work the same way. So why are they different? Well, it has to do with the placement of the index mark. Now, if we bring the index mark on the folded scale directly over the index on the D scale, we notice that the numbers line up. So for example, here's 3, here's 2, and here's 14. All right, they all line up. So what's happening is that this index mark is becoming this index mark right here. Likewise, if we come out to the other side, our scales again line up. So we've got 4 and 4, we've got 6 and 6, and our index is lined up over the index. So basically, these are acting as if they're the same index they can be used interchangeably. Well, here's an interesting problem that you run into. Say you want to multiply 7 by 3. So you would put your cursor on the 7 on the DF scale. You would put your index directly underneath it. And then you would come out here to 3. And we would read off our answer. It's 21. How do we get the 21 from this scale down to the D scale for our next operation? Well, there's a simple way of doing that. Put the index of the CF scale directly under your hairline, and then come out to the index of the C scale, and your 21 is right below it. Because these two indices are keyed to each other, that's why if we take 4, put the index of the folded C scale directly over it, and come out to 6 on the CF scale, we can read down to 24. However, we can't read up from the CF scale to the DF scale because they're not keyed to each other. So while the CF and the DF scale are at the same scale with a different index than the CD scale, the AB scales are not at the same scale. The AB scales are the squares of the numbers that are on the CD scale. And as a result, the index on the AB scale is not interchangeable with the index on the CD scale. Now, the first thing that we want to do when we go between the CD scale and the AB scale is we want to close the scale, which means that we're going to line the indices up because we're just looking at the values of numbers here. We're not doing an equation. But say we want to come out here to 5 on the CD scale, and we want to read up and get 25 on the AB scale because that is the square of 5. Well, suppose we then have to multiply that by a number down on the D scale. So an example of this would be 3 times 5 squared. Okay, how would we do something like that? Well, we have to get this 25 down to the CD scale. And there's a couple of different ways that we could do that. Uh, one way, obviously, is just write down 25 and then come on over here and put it on the 25. And that may be fine, 
for some numbers, but there's an inherent amount of inaccuracy that comes when you try and transfer numbers like that. What we want is we want to come out here to 25, and we want to do something with the slide to make that number appear down on the C and the D scale. Now obviously, if 5 is x and 25 is x squared, how do we make 5 or x become x squared? Well, we multiply it by 5 or x. So what we can do is we can just leave the scale as it is, bring that index over, and then come down and multiply it by 5. Now our 25 is down on the D scale where we want it. Now another way that we can do it is once again, if this is x squared and that is x, we need to multiply it by x. We did it the straight way the first time, but now we're going to do something a little different. Let's go ahead and divide it on the CI scale. This will come down here to 5 on the CI scale and divide it by 1 over 5 and come down and get our 25. So basically what we're doing to get x squared down to the CD scale, uh, we need to take x and multiply by itself. Well, what about the k-scale down here? The k-scale is the cube of the numbers that are on the CD scale. So if we come here to 3 on the CD scale and want to get its cube, we read straight down and see 27. Well, how do we get 27 from the k-scale back up to the CD scale? Once again, kind of the same thing. So here is x, 3. x squared is right above it, 9. And we want x cubed. So if we multiply x by x squared, we get x cubed. So basically, all we're going to do is multiply 3 by whatever number is above it on the AB scale to transfer the number on the K scale to the CD scale. So we can come right here, put the index of the C scale directly over 3. Then we read out to 9, which multiplies 3 by 9, and we get 27 transferred down to the D scale where we want it. Now, likewise, we can divide it by 1 over 9 on the CI scale, but we don't have a CI scale on this side. It's on the other side. What do we do? Well, flip the slide rule right over. Notice it's still on 3. Now we've got the CI scale right here, and there's our 27. So that's how you transfer these back and forth between the scales. Now, in the next episode, I want to talk about the genius of the design of the slide rule. For example, if you want real accuracy, you need a longer slide rule, like this 20-inch. Aristo Studio. However, can you get the accuracy of a 20 inch slide rule out of a 10 inch slide rule? With some clever mathematics and a little insight, you sure can. And in our next episode, I'm going to show you how the designers of slide rules did that. So, this is Bob the Science Guy. Follow me for more slide rule information. I'll see you again soon. Thanks for stopping by.